I just go wherever you want me to go. I talk to God so much as probably if people around me was around me when I was talking to them, they'd think I was crazy. Come on now. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you all the time. Some people say, well, I ain't seen someone so in a long time. We're not on talk. We're not on speaking terms. That's the way most of the church is in America with Jesus. They're not on speaking terms. I heard about a man tried to get in a church one time. I heard about it on the radio this week. This guy dresses up like Jesus. And I don't know why he does that. He goes around to different churches on Sunday. He went around to a church last Sunday. And he went in dressed like Jesus. One of the deacons come and said, you ain't welcome here. So what could Jesus, if that was Jesus, what could he say? He could say, well, don't worry about it, honey. I can't get in here either. He's trying to get into some houses. He's trying to get into some people's lives. He wants to. But the door knob is on our side. Lord, I ain't got but five minutes. The doorknob's on our side. That's why he's outside knocking. I believe you can have personal revival. I praise God. John Kilpatrick's having one down in Alabama. I wished I was down there. I would run down there right quick if I could today and then come back tonight. But I tell you what, you can have a personal revival every time you get with Jesus. Come on now. You can have a personal revival every day. Jesus loved. Jesus loved Lazarus, Martha, and her sister. Why would the Holy Ghost put that in there? Because they had a special relationship with him. You can be so close to God, you can make other people jealous. Don't you tell them too much. Come on now. How many of you ever told somebody too much and they got jealous of you? They think they were anointed. Oh, they think they're something, don't they? They ought to be saying, Lord, pour it on them. Let me grab a hold of their coattail. Find out where they're getting. Out. What am I going to get this for me? There's enough to go around. You can get so close to God that you make people jealous. Hallelujah. God, I feel the anointing in here. Let me read those. Let me read this. I guess I got about three or four minutes. Hallelujah. You say, Well, I'm I'm cold. Well, you can get hot again. Well, I ain't never been hot. I'll show you how to get there. All you got to do is go to the Word. There's a map right to where Jesus sits. It'll take you there. Humble yourself. Make Jesus number one, not the cares of this life. The deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Don't let persecution and tribulation stop you. Martha didn't shake their, her fist in Jesus' face when he came and he was too late. I'm, 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 I'm getting in trouble, but I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost talking to me. <laughs> if you're comparing yourself to somebody else and they're a biscuit maker and you're one that stays at Jesus' feet all the time and you're saying, look at them. They're not spiritual. They're not as spiritual as I am. They're not, they, 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 they don't have the anointing. Right? They're not as spiritual as I am. I'm going to tell you, you're in trouble. You better get rid of that pride and forget about them biscuit makers and them feet people. Find his feet for you. Come on now. 
Amen. It ain't a contest down here in the kingdom of God to see who is the most anointed, who is the most gifted in the flow of the gifts and who can preach the greatest and who can teach the greatest. God hates that kind of contest because James and John was arguing who was going to sit at the right hand and who was going to, you know, and his mama come up and tried to make a deal with Jesus. Can I bribe you a little bit to get my boys over there on your right hand and your left hand? Jesus' mother and brethren came to get him. His brothers and his sisters came to get him because they thought he'd lost his mind. And he looked at him. He said, behold, my, bro my, my mother and my brothers. And he said, you know who my mothers and brothers are? Those that obey and do the will of God. You say, well, how you going to obey? Seek ye first the king and his righteousness. And all this other stuff you're trying to fight over will be added to you. And when God begins to add, I, I know we gotta go. I've noticed in the Bible in the book of Acts, when God begins to add, he gets all hyper. He goes to multiplying. Come on now. He goes to multiplying. He can't add without multiplying. So if you seek his face, if you seek him, the person of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, you welcome over my house all the time. I, 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 just all the time you welcome there. Let him know he is. He'll come over, he'll begin to add. And he'll get so excited, he begin to multiply. Things will begin to multiply in your life. Passion will begin to multiply. Desire, love will begin to multiply. Read that with me one more time. We'll go. It's twi it's, it's, we hadn't set that clock. It's fall back time. It's 1.30. But it's actually 12.30. What does that verse 5 say? Read it out loud. Why would the Holy Ghost have to highlight that? Because they had a special relationship with him. You say, well, I've been a drunk. I've been a, I've been a prostitute. I've been a, a drug peddler. I've been a, I've been a drug addict. I, I've been on all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but the grace of God's touched your life. See, you qualify just as much for him to, to love to come to your house as the, as the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. As, as uh the leaders of the denominations in Nashville and Cleveland and Springfield and wherever they might be. When the blood of Jesus touches your life, your sins are gone. Are you with me? You can pour ointment on Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah.